And moving on next to Dark, what do you have for us? Uh, I have um, uh, Kikiko Mari Kukitsu no Monmon. Uh, or yes. the vexations of a shut-in vampire princess. And uh, is, yeah, I guess I'll just is this is not yeah this is definitely a light novel, right? I this think is, yeah, this is a light novel original. Um, yes. This is being done by Project Number Nine, the okay. studio. Uh, the usual kind of stuff it's a lot of like rom-com oh right i keep forgetting they're the roku view studio (laughs) yeah and uh so the audio visuals for this are pretty solid the this seems to be Uh a first for the director um as far as like full directing you know it seems like he's done some Mm -hmm. episode directing here and there throughout the years mostly done key animations and animation directing but this appears to be the the first like you know actual full full director role um and spoiler alert it do it do be showing (laughs) um (laughs) so this series is about uh we kind of like open on a vampire girl um being a shut-in you know she's just in her room and uh this is three years after she become became a shut-in and you're not really shown why at first um it's explained to you that she dislikes blood as a vampire and she's very weak because of this now let's see and during this um i forget what deal she cuts with her dad her dad her parents are like um higher ups in the vampire world uh in their nation and she makes a deal that um she'll become like a general essentially in an army uh in their army um and so then she becomes the commander of the moonlight army uh, which is her nation and for some reason their army is primarily built up of sort of like degenerates or like fuck-ups and it becomes her job essentially to straighten them out and lead them now this series has a lot of world building um and it's not very good world building so to get past what how the world functions is basically uh, there are these like dark orbs that fuel each nation, um, and they make it so that no one in no one within the nation can die. Um, and then, centered between all like the five nations in the center is essentially the Warring Lands, where all of their dark orbs have um, influence, and that's where they meet to do battle. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is more, at least as far as I understand, that's more to avoid, like, essentially, like, you know, messing with people's lives or doing, like, infrastructure damage. Um, Because it does seem like no matter what nation you're in, you don't die. Um, Like, dark orbs essentially have influence, like, over everything. Um, And so, yeah, so there's no true death and it's more of a war game. Uh, At least that's what's revealed to you. So. Um, don't tell me this is a don't tell me this is like a vr thing or no 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 it's not it's just straight up like there are just magic orbs that keep everyone what is what is that shitty show raindrop thing raindrop protocol rainy protocol no (laughs) protocol rain Rain, yeah 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 so we have our main character uh uh tara kamari ganda's blood um and her maid vilhaze um, you also have the like queen slash leader, uh, Karen Helvetius. Um, and so a lot of the moment to moment stuff is kind of the uh, Yuri posturings uh, from Bill Hayes towards the MC. Uh, I would compare it more to an, a like more aggressive 
um uh, maybe like Furuko to Makoto um thing from Railgun. I guess if you wanted to like, okay. do a direct comparison, it's it's like one of those shticks. Um it's it's like pretty fun with that. It it is uh so the first episodes are very heavy on comedy. Um there is annoyingly so in some cases. Um there is a bit of like a guy who keeps getting killed. Um you know, he gets like his like he he wants to sort of prove that uh Terakamari is actually really weak. Um and he tries to attack her to sort of sh like essentially to assert dominance and be like why would you lead us you know you're not even like a a strong vampire um and so the bit for the first couple episodes is kind of like him just dying through happenstance like he initially like tries to die tries to charge her dive at her through a door through like these double doors um and then the double doors wind up close like slamming shut on his neck and it kills him um then at another point, um, Te uh, Terakamari is, like, trying to take out, like, a Quillen for, um, like, to just ride it as, like, her mount. Um, but they're, ext they're, like, you know, lightning fast, and she loses control of it, and it kicks him in the head while he's, like, plotting his revenge against her, and then kills him again. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff of the ruffians, like, getting into shit. Um, there's a really fucking annoying guy uh, who, like, does, like, this really shitty rap bit, like, slash, like, beatbox bit, and it, it fucking sucks. Like, it's awful. It's, like, not <laughs> funny. It's just dog shit. Like I, sk like, I skipped it when he was coming on screen. I was like, no, I'm done. Like, no, thank you. This <laughs> is, like... This bit Dick, is fucking Dick, rancid. Um, How bad is the bit compared it's to It's really to bad. Like, I... Um, I'm trying to think of, like, another bit that, like, really bothered me as much as this, and I can't really think of it. Um, It's one of those things where you think that it would last, like, it, it's a bit that you would expect to last, like, ten seconds. Like, I thought this guy was gonna get his oh, fucking skull okay. caved in as like a joke because he's annoying like f like 10 seconds into it or five seconds into the bit and then the bit just goes on for like two minutes at one point and then that's just his character throughout the entire series and he comes up like a decent amount of times um is it like uh so that's a shame is it like the baby sensory stream because that bit was horrible yeah uh, actually yeah it's like a really bad it's like a really bad germ a bit that just keeps going <laughs> and that you wish would stop. Hell yeah. Um, except it's like not even funny because like how like awful the bit is. It's just, it's just awful <laughs> in how awful it is. So that's, that was really unfortunate. Um, that guy like stops kind of showing up as much a little later on. Um, but you know, we kind of got to get into the meat and potatoes here. So she starts leading this army. Uh, they're very successful, like kind of right off the bat, just through like happenstance and through assistance of her maid, Vilsen, uh, Vilhays. And then um, another character shows up uh, named uh, Millicent Blue Knight on episode three. Um, and she just goes like, Haha, I am going to fucking kill you now, uh, Terakomari, because I hate you. Yeah, they're at like a party, okay, and this chick uh, breaks in, and she's like, "I'm part of, I'm part of like the lunar cult or the full moon cult or something." Um, and then she like kills a couple guards, and they're like, or like a guard, and they're like, "Oh my god, they're not regenerating because she has like a true article weapon." made out of this alloy that when you get killed by it you die you die for real um wow. okay and so then uh yeah she like taunts her um and then for the next like three episodes uh now uh no comedy 
comedy is over you fucking idiot you thought this was a comedy series well you're stupid you're a fucking moron because there's no more comedy now it's time for serious stuff and drama and action uh and then uh bill hayes gets kidnapped and then there's like a whole section where it's like oh millicent blue knight was really mad because Tara Kamari like fucked up her life in the past and like she was like bullying her because she was like oh you're like a noble rich girl who like doesn't suffer and like doesn't have to do anything with her life um and I hate you so I'm gonna bully you uh and then she bullies her too hard and then apparently something happened when she bullied her too hard and it made her life even worse um but you're not allowed to know what that is for like another couple episodes of Vil Hayes being tortured and stabbed and whatnot. And so this arc then uh, gets into the fact that um, Millicent hates our main character uh, because she was forced by her father uh, to activate. Um, I don't even remember what it was called. It was basically like, hey, uh, do you know that if like you uh have someone go through hardships like hard enough they could just activate like god mode and we'll just call this power oh, god right. mode well, i forget cool. what it's called but it, they're just like yeah it's called like... it's called character growth no they're just like yeah and you get like crazy strong and it's it's awesome and so like millicent's dad was obsessed with this idea and put her through like brutal training to like try and activate this god mode thing in her not uh, disregarding the fact that i don't think there was any indicator that she could even do this um like enter this state of being um so i guess he just did it because you know maybe maybe there's a chance um so that was stupid um but yeah so that's why she hates her now uh lo and behold we get to the sort of wrapping up of the arc where Tara Kamari shows up uh to save Vil Hayes who's being like strung up and fucking stabbed or whatever with the genuine article weapon and shit and you know Millicent's like ah oh, I'm gonna make you watch your maid die um but then some stuff happens like she uses like you know uh what do you call like traps and shit and like cr magic crystals essentially to amplify her power and sort of like macgyvers her way to free uh vil Hayes. but millicent is still there so she frees vil Hayes, you know briefly um but that doesn't really matter uh so in the struggle essentially tara Komari, who hates blood uh winds up getting a little bit of blood in her mouth like a drop of blood from Vilhaze in her mouth. Um, or no, I think she just drinks Vilhaze's blood. Something like that. Uh, something happens with that. Uh, and then she goes into the super god mode, the super overpowered god mode, uh, and then makes both of Millicent's arms explode and then uh, rips her head off of her body during a big, during a big fight scene. Fuck? Now, the big yeah. fight scene looked good. Um, but it also randomly had an insert song that like kind of came out of fucking nowhere as if this was like a super duper like climax that we were building up to, but it was very like start and stop. And so like the insert song just starts playing and I'm like, this is episode five. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, what, like, what is going on? Is it um, a good insert song? I mean, it's fine. It's like pretty, pretty generic, pretty like whatever. Um, but it's like what you would expect out of like some random like fucking action series or like, I don't know, like sword art or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then that happens and then that resolves. And then we're back to like the day to day comedy stuff. Um, and so it turns out that Tara, Tara Kamari was hypnotized to not like blood because she's too dang strong. Um, what I, the I, fuck is going on? Okay, so what is the, can, I, can I interrupt you for a second? What is, what is sort of the focus of this series? Is this yeah, like I'm some so sort of action adventure? Asked. I'm still trying to find <laughs> that out. <laughs> Is this like some sort of slow life kind of thing? Is this an action adventure? What is going on right now? So uh, to <laughs> answer all of your questions, no and yes. 
Um, and yes. <laughs> and yes. And I don't really know. Um, this is why I fucking hate this series. And I think it's dog shit. Now, this light novel could be great. Um, and this director could just be a fucking moron. But I don't know. Um, but ultimately, whatever is doing this, uh, the pacing of this series is awful. It's one of the worst paced series I've seen in a very, very long time. I would but, say... But the, problem is, the additional problem is it's also that you not only don't know the pacing, but you don't even know what the pacing might, should be because you don't know what the focus yeah, of the like, story is. Yeah, it's like I like, genuinely you don't, know what don't understand like, what they yeah. want to do. Like, yeah. Because, again, what, like... I would say, like, this this only makes sense for people who have seen something like Railgun or, or Index. I would say, like, take Railgun or Index and literally divide its comedy. Like, uh, first of all, like, divide its comedy and action bits and, like, all the world building and stuff. Like, segment it and just, like, throw them, like, like put the comedy all in, like, one part, like, right in the beginning and then have like yeah. no real build up to things and then have like the action and world building stuff on like episode 3 onwards and it's like that's what you're getting here like it's awful it's it it has like no there's like no real balance to it whatsoever it's just the scale is this, is this... one way to, to the other like whenever the fuck it wants Can I ask, to. You you've watched nine episodes of this. I'm assuming. Nine uh, I've watched like right seven now, episodes eight? of this. Seven or eight. I've watched like. Seven are are or there eight, nine I'm episodes? Not caught yeah. Up. Okay. So I'm not fully. Is this up. slated? Yeah. Is this slated to be twelve episodes or twenty four episodes or how many episodes? Is this? this is slated to be twelve episodes. Okay, like, so, uh, what the uh, fuck I, is going on? I have no idea here? what, like, I don't know what the resolution is supposed to be. I don't know <laughs> what the point of the fucking series is. Because, the like, the ultra moon mega cult, blood explosion, obviously. The, the moon yeah. cult, but, like, that's been, like, I, like, I don't understand. Like, is this just going to be, like, a series of, of, like, I don't know, like, I guess a series of arcs or whatever that are surrounded by like Tara Kamari like activating her like fucking blood god mode every now and then and then maybe like learning more about it because like like I guess that's like possible um and not very good but but again like it, it's mostly not very good because of like the complete lack of balance like the fact that the dial gets dragged like to 100 on either end like, that's why I opened, I mean, again, I opened with explaining this and ran through it because, like, that's really the only way to capture, like, how awful and confusing these, like, this lack of balance is. Because, again, like, this series that had a fight where, like, a character's arms get blown off and then, like, all of these, like, super edgy bits where it's like, oh, my God, she's got, like, the real weapon that'll fucking kill you if you die for real this time but but like I, is this supposed to be like are, are the also the lore... introduction of all these things is like is like fucking like the worst <gasps> examples of exposition fucking imaginable can, can i just ask okay it sounds kind of silly but it's not if you've like read enough anime or sorry watched enough anime read enough manga whatever i mean even just like stories in general but can i ask if is the lore in this story supposed to be taken seriously yes 100 percent. okay it's it's 1000 percent okay. serious also the blood the dark cores were not introduced in a serious manner either oh my god because it okay. was introduced where like tara kamari is like leading them against like these weird looking beast people or not even weird looking they just look like they're like cartoony like animal people and so they like fight they like light them on fire and shit like they kill all of them it's not like that that okay. brutal, but they kill all of them and then they all get like resurrected and they get up and they're like, damn, I haven't haven't actually oh, lost man. and died in a while. That's crazy. And then they all walk off and then they're like, yeah, this world has these things called dark cores and there's no death in this world. And then two episodes later, they're like, 
here's the true weapon that'll kill you if you die. So <laughs> you die in real cool. life if they kill you with this. Yeah, yeah, it's like here's the here's this real thing because like the stakes are real now. I know that we showed this as comedy, but now the stakes are real. So 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 what kind of death you know, weapon are you talking about? Is it like a death note or is it like gable? No, it's like a dagger. It's just a dagger made out of an alloy that like will kill you if you get killed. So wounds will not really heal you. when you when you get stabbed with it. Uh, like yeah, grenade. well, your wounds your wounds don't really heal in general with the dark core. I don't think like or where, or rather they take a dark decent amount core. of time. Like you still gotta like I I think it's more so like when you get fully killed is when you get like fully resurrected. Your so, so like you're still slower. So what it's you're saying? Like, it, it's, it's almost like the chick from uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, where she has to like fucking hack you to pieces to like fully heal you. So you're um, saying it's like rule breaker in a way, because it yeah, breaks pretty the rules. Much, like it, it's just in very, your, it's very stupid. Evil. Like to me, it's like very stupid to be like in two episodes, be like, ah, here's these like dark horrors and there's no death. And then an episode later, you're like, uh, here's the thing that kills you when you die, by the way. Just so you know. Um, but the, but mainly the the real issue is that this this series is like, you know, 100 on a dial one way or the other at a time. And there's zero balance. Um, well, and I it's mean, like it, bad, it's, it's so. like the, the, the problem with is not even how extreme it is. It's the fact that it's not picking a side and doing it properly because it's like again yeah, no it, i don't care about the extreme it's just like there it, it, yeah it's yeah, yeah. like i don't even think you need to pick a side it's just like you need to have a balance of this then like you yeah you or like you need to do what you need to you're doing again, well because something right? like it's railgun like, or something like railgun and index like has these moments well like done yeah, and i yeah, think yeah. the moments in this series could be considered well done if the balance was correct but the problem mm. is is again you go from like this dumbass fucking idiot like beatboxing like bit in one episode and that guy getting his skull caved in and dying over and over again slapstick bit to then being like oh yeah now this like random chick showed up who's like yeah i'm gonna kill you because i fucking hate you and i have a weapon that kills people and, and like then you just have drama and like action for three episodes and it's like, wh like, what the fuck? Like, why? Like, what is happening anymore? Like, I don't get it. Like, I thought this series was just pure slapstick comedy. Now you're, now you're just like pulling me aside and being like, no. Now you have to actually take this super serious. By the way, like, this is fucking stupid. Like, this says, this is nothing. Like, yeah. it, it, it's just, it's very odd. It does not set the stakes properly in the beginning, and then it doesn't follow through with them properly. And then it and then it immediately goes back to, it appears to be, like, weird, like, slow-life comedy shit after. Like, episode... Because yeah. it's, like, the standard it, like structures for these. Six movies. onwards or whatever seems to just be going back to not actually really talking about serious shit anymore. Yeah, because it's, like... The 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 way that you could structure this right would be one of two ways. One is if you want to emphasize the serious side a little bit more, you would start out with the serious side. You do some media rest stuff. You quickly try to do some a little, little bit of exposition or narrative background to bring in the lore really quickly because it's again it's only twelve episodes, right? Um, do all this crap, run that for probably three to four to five episodes. Have a slow life episode where they, you know, you give in the com comedic relief if need be, or you show the black side with the uh, versus with everybody else, and then go back to the series. That's one way to do it. And the other way to do it is if you want to emphasize the slow life stuff, you start off with the slow life, and then in episode four or five, you bring in like bits and pieces of like the serious lore and then build that up to like a mini arc or climax, uh, you know, the, the standard structure. But it's like this episode two three of suddenly everybody's serious and people don't die when they are killed except when they're killed by this this is very like i, I don't know about that <laughs> you know what yeah I mean? like, it's, like that's what i mean it's like it, it's there are plenty of series that have done this type of stuff before again like I, I i think a good or like a decent enough comparison is is like rail decks in this in the sense of you know the, that series has a balance of comedy I would say Railgun especially, where like Railgun has this 
usually a series a season of railgun has a build-up where it'll have a very much like a slow life and comedy yuri stuff in the, the first episode and kind of drop hints of like you know it'll say like here are where our characters are at and then it'll drop hints of what the upcoming arc is going to be like the series yeah arc. it has very you good know, like, like splits between the soul life and the uh, actual lore yeah, and the slow life bleeds into that in a much better way where it'll, like... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also not turning up the slow life and comedy up to, like, a million um, right away either, which yeah. is also beneficial. Usually there'll be, like, a crime that happens or something, and it'll establish, like, you know, like, there are... There's crimes going on in this city. Like, there are... There is, like, you know, threats in this city that are happening um you'll catch up with the characters and it'll introduce sort of the new the new shtick for an arc whether that be the like um the like dream indian poker cards um and it'll introduce it in a way that wraps into the slow life and then it'll be like okay well how does this tie in like this will become sort of tied into the more serious aspects like coming up you know like like you know how are like these things will be being used in a crime or something like that um plenty of series do these things plenty of this just in general like a, a, any series that has action and comedy will do something like that um but this series uh this series doesn't do that this series decides to be a comedy a pure comedy series for two episodes and then a pure drama action series for three episodes and then stick back to a comedy action or no a comedy series after that and so on and so forth it seems um and that's really bad and again i don't know if that is to do with the um source material or if that's to do with the director like looking at the source material seeing that they have 12 episodes for this light novel series based series and then being like well we're not going to get jack shit done in 12 episodes um and then just kind of really flubbing on balance um, yeah it, it was which is possible um and it's unfortunate yeah. and i if feel you like they tell, could also have maybe just really like, gets under my skin that. when a series does this yeah instead of doing that sort of weird truncation they could have i feel like at this point i mean i don't even know if it's truncation doing... like, I, like i don't know I, I can't speak on it because i've never read this yeah yeah, yeah yeah i i I, I'm saying if it was a truncation at that point, it would almost have been better to just do a straight add up, cut it off with like a kind of we all ran into the sunset ending kind of in, in episode 12 and just have it be a very blatant promotion. I think that would almost be better than, you know, whatever you just described in this yeah, series. Or, or, or try and like, you know, try and then like vie for a season two. Because like, don't yeah, get me yeah. wrong, like, if I like turn off my brain and like isolate these sections of the series, I'm like, yeah, this drama action, good. This world building, like the world itself, interesting. Um, some of the plot endings, nice. These characters, enjoyable. Um, except for the beatboxing asshole. Uh, really wish he wasn't in the series, just even in the comedy aspect. But then when you when you take the characters and then you transition them to between these parts, I'm like, no, now I don't like them because I was yeah. liking these characters, the way they were behaving in the sort of slapstick comedy part. I like that. I liked them there. And now you're kind of like tweaking them and changing them and asking me to like them in this new part. And I was like, well, in that mm. case, I don't like them here like not enjoying them as much so that's kind of like where i'm at in, in that regard like I, i'm really not not a huge fan of uh of the way this series is handling that and like i said like it, it super gets under my skin because it's like it, it's just it just feels wrong you know, it it feels like you are watching this series and asking yourself, like, what, like, what the fuck am I even doing? Like, what is even going on? Like, so much, so many things are happening right now, and none of them feel like they mean anything. Because in one episode, you're telling me about a dark core, 
and you're being like, yeah, here's a dark core. And you say to yourself, oh, okay, the dark core stuff is so that we can have this like war game thing, but maintain the lighthearted like slapstick comedy elements to it. And where like mm -hmm. where it doesn't really matter, like, you know, there aren't really like stakes. And so this is like, you know, this Hikikomori like vampire girl and and stuff like that. Um but then you immediately turn around and be like, just kidding. That dark core stuff is actually here to set up like the drama aspect of there's a person who's like, you know, using something that'll kill people that are, you know, taking advantage of this core, essentially. And it's just like, you know, the 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 place the series is going to is entirely unpredictable then. And and it's yeah, a shame. I just think it's, it's a shame, just, especially yeah, because again, like I said, like it, it, it's it's actual quality is is nice. Like its audio visuals are very good. I would say. Um. And, you know, all of that stuff is great. So it's it's a deeper shame that that the series is like this. It just wants to go too deep too quickly. It's just yeah it's not ready for it or it's not written in a way where the the deeper stuff or the lore stuff is, um how do i say this it's not engaging enough to to the viewer it's, yeah i mean it either needed to set the stakes earlier no actually no it just needed to set the stakes earlier like <laughs> because yeah. i was yeah, gonna it, say it, it needed, needed to, to set the it stakes to earlier initially or start lead, out or with lead into hey, them more. It's like it's like, hey, we might be actually serious about this. Well, like, sure, there might be a Hikomori like shut in princess, but we might actually be serious about this story instead of being like, yeah, uh, yeah, haha, shut in princess. By the way, like, people can fucking die, and you're like, what? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. honestly, it would have been it would have been more reasonable if there were no dark cores, and they were like, oh, there's like slapstick comedy, and we introduced this character um voiced by um fuck why can't i remember his name uh it's the voice actor uh yeah yeah uh Yus yusuke kobayashi like that's the guy who keeps getting killed as a bit but like if they honestly it would have been uh even fine if this series didn't feature these dark cores and it was just like the joke was that we had a character voiced by Kobayashi Yusuke, who is like plotting to defeat her, who immediately gets killed by a door. And he's just never in the series again because he's fucking dead. Like, mm -hmm. he, even if the stakes were like that, this series would probably balance the drama and comedy better because you wouldn't have that like immediate hit with, you know, the dark core being like, okay, there are no stakes. And that's why this is a comedy. And then just being like, no, the stakes are real because there are things that can get around it. Like, well, mm -hmm. that's kind of stupid. Especially because it was supposed to be like war games. And it's like, okay, you think that the series is going to go in the direction of like uh, Terakami just doing like the war games. And since there are no, like no one can die, but she wants to like fool everyone into thinking she's a super powerful vampire to like keep her position um and whatnot uh but then like the series doesn't go that way and it, it just i don't know it just does not feel feel right so yeah yeah i would it's, uh, it's a little bit unfortunate i would not recommend this series <laughs> to say the least what would you, yeah it's it's a little bit of what I, my mall rating being this sort of i mean my mall <sighs> My mall rating would be like a, a just a six, like, and like my true rating would be six, just like huh? a six. Yeah, I like, but there are like like real sixes. Like, I really wouldn't recommend you watch. Watch, like, to be honest, like. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like, I, I'm still being okay. like, I wouldn't recommend you watch it. Like, it's still like it's a six, but it's like. It's I not like on like, the yeah. abject horrible side. Is sort of yeah, what you're because saying. again, like the audio visuals are great, like okay, and some of these bits are pretty solid. But again, just the the pacing and the juxtaposition of things is is very bad to the point where I like I wouldn't recommend it from that aspect. But I I think the series <laughs> overall is like 
you know, it has shit going for it, obviously. Like, if you can somehow right. look past that stuff, then then you're in for a good time, probably. But, like, for me, it's like, I cannot. Like, I, there's no way I can, like, forgive a series that has such, like, just bizarre um, balance to it, or lack thereof. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. It, All right, whatever that is, let's uh, not do that sound. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, thank you, Dark, for helping to cover uh, the stations of a shut-in princess. Again, it was a little bit of a unfortunate. I, I thought you know because it was it is actually pretty popular if I remember correctly, right? But it's it's um it's a little bit unfortunate. That yeah, the I mean probably like I can cities. see why. Like it has it has all the ingredients, right? Like it has mm. it has like the extreme Yuri stuff between like Yeah, the made. Yuri stuff was really popular. Um yeah. And again, like that stuff can that even that could work fine. Uh, even if it was as long as the serious like, stuff was in, if like kind that of was it. just yeah. the most of the comedy, but again, the yeah, fact that yeah. they started out like so com comedic heavy, like that was just it, it was not doing it for me. Yeah, very unfortunate. Again, um, vexations of a uh, shut in vampire princess, Kikomari Kyuketsuki no Monmo. Uh, so yeah, if uh, a little bit unfortunate, but uh. It is it is uh, the most recent uh, anime produced by uh, Project Number Nine, based off the light novel original. 